when I'm a, a member of the audience, I feel free to respond to the moment, like booing, for example. <laughs> uh, I went to see three famous jazz musicians at the Beacon uh, Theatre in New York, three very famous characters, and I looked up, and I was appalled. I was appalled. I paid my money, and I wished the musicians to be in the moment responding, and one of them was the bass player, and he looked he looked to me, this is my projection and assumption, he looked a bit embarrassed. In other words, he looked as if he knew what was going on, which is a fair bit of showboating and playing to the gallery. So I booed. I booed. This was my audience right. You too have this right. You have the responsibility to remind the musician that the musician has responsibility both to music and to you. And if he fails in that by preening, posturing, self-regard, remind him. And in this case, I booed. And just in front of me over there, a rather burly gentleman with a very, very close crew cut and an earring turned around and said, shut up. <laughs> so I did. <laughs> and exerted my second right as a member of the audience and got up and left. On other occasions, um, for example, within guitar craft, uh, my sense is when we learn to play an instrument, when we engage practically with music, what we don't normally have as part of our learning process is learning the instrument in performance, and performance means with an audience. However superb one may be as a player at home, or with one's mother and friends and family, as soon as you walk into the Iron Rail Bar in West Virginia, <laughs> audience patterns change. Uh, and uh, when we had quite a few guitar craft courses just down the road at the Claymont Mansion, uh, fairly often we would take the students into a performance mode at the Iron Rail. And one night there was a very drunk, blonde lady who was in the outer bar, and she stuck her head round into the little room at the back, and I welcomed her in. What an opportunity for the students. And she hated them, and I, I, please sit down and listen. It was wonderful. But you can't always rely on a drunk blonde woman who fairly frankly expresses her opinions as to these acoustic instruments and players. You really can't, with tunes that really aren't. So in that situation, sometimes I would accept myself the role of heckler. Now, this is a very valid role which is, in my view, uh, closely akin to the fool in a Morris dancing troupe. <laughs> Do you know of Morris dancing? Yes. yes. I was myself a member of the uh, Sherborne Village Morris dancing troupe in uh, 1976. Each of the villages, this is a, a segue, <laughs> each of the, the villages, although the dances have often the same steps, if you like, the processes and patterns. Each of the villages have their own particular step. And the Sherborne step was... There's many years since I... This, this was the basic step. And the other villages would have their own. <laughs> But the fool is the character who is the, the wise, like the monkins is then with the stick. You're sleeping, my friend. Whack. You've gone to sleep on the job, my friend. Awake. Whack. And this is the role of the heckler. But the position must be of complete and utter impartiality. It's no good booing just because you don't like the musician or what they're playing. 
one must only act if the musician is asleep on their feet. And one night, there was a Los Angeles lawyer who was on the guitar craft course who came on and performed a song he'd written himself, which I believe involved his girlfriend. And there was a famous line which burned itself into my psyche. <laughs> this famous line was, you turn my shit to haiku. <laughs> with guitar accompaniment. <laughs> at which point I took off one of my two shoes and threw it at him. <laughs> he ducked and continued, at which point I took off my second shoe and threw that at him too. The man on my left followed my example and threw both of his shoes at the Los Angeles lawyer. Anyway, there, I'm all part of uh, attempting to engage with the audience.